Good afternoon everyone. <clears throat> well, that storm yesterday wasn't as bad as what they'd forecast, as far as I'm concerned anyway. Um, it was very, very windy. Yeah, lots and lots of rain. Um, but no damage done here. Everything fine. I'm still painting my little unit outside. So, Yesterday, while the storm was raging, I decided to just get on with various things. I've been sorting out bags and containers of stuff to take hither and thither, recycling, etc. Um, I was just finishing off my lunch. This is the cauldron of plenty. You're familiar with this. Don't ask me what goes into it. Anything and everything that I have. In the fridge, on the shelves, in the garden. So I just mix it all up, chop it all up finely, put it all in there, put something in with it like this. I've got my rebel chilli. This is made in Ireland by the way and all natural ingredients. Um, it's called rebel chilli because it's made down in County Cork, which is known as the rebel county. <laughs> so that was delicious. Um, I was just reading a book because what I've been doing recently is a lot of reading as opposed to um, being on the internet or, um, you know, tapping buttons, going from one site to another, never quite finding what one would be interested in. So I decided to go through the various books that I have. Now, I can't even remember whether someone sent this to me because there's no signature or anything on the inside whether I bought it um, whether I got it as part of my Yuletide presents I don't know but it's fabulous so before I go any further I'm just going to share this with you yes he's been for a W-A-L-K and he's rather tired so that's the tail end of my lunch. Absolutely gorgeous. I'm going to make some tea shortly. So this book, now I had it in on the shelf in my bedroom for quite some time, I think. You see, I'm just not sure because there's so much stuff here in this house. Um, <clears throat> it's called Not Just Jane. And it's rediscovering seven amazing women writers who transform British literature. And it's by a writer called Shelley DeWeese. DeWeese or DeWeese? I'm not too sure how that's pronounced. But anyway, there it is. Um, it's absolutely fabulous. I think she's a great writer. Um, this is her on the back. And... Uh, she has a documented obsession with British literature. Now, I'd like to see more writers like this because she's just, it's, it's, it's fascinating. It's incredible. Um, the introduction, which is quite long and well worth the read. Normally I don't bother with introductions, you know, but um, it's just so intriguing. It's so interesting. I'm actually still on the introduction. So I have to say I have dipped in and out of little chapters. But it's just fabulous. Anyway, um, I'll get round to reading you some of that in due course. Now, what have I been up to? Tidying up, clearing up, sorting out stuff. Oh, can I just say, um, some of you may have misinterpreted what I said a few days ago in a video which was, um, I've taken my address down from the website because I have so much stuff here in the cottage um, and I get so many presents, so many gifts. I just really wanted to, to, to put on hold, a very, very long hold, any gifts that may be winging their way to me. And by that I mean actual things, you know, um, Anyone who wants to make a donation, that's that's entirely different. Please be my guest. I'm always 
welcoming donations because, as you'll see in a minute, there's a fair few things to be done. And uh, a lot of the stuff that has to be done in and around the cottage, you have to employ someone to come and do it. So it's a kind of a double whammy. It's just not it's not just the materials, it's the it's the cost of labour and um I like to pay anyone who works here a fair day's wage for a fair day's work. Um so I do pay the uh, just slightly above the kind of minimum wage. I think the minimum wage is about nine nine euros something an hour and I like to pay straight 10 euros an hour so um, and that's minimum uh, right I'm gonna go outside now in a moment and show you what I've been up to out there you can see all the perdigoniums or otherwise known as geraniums have been removed from the windowsills they're all in the barn and I shall be minding them until I think about March, late March comes around. Gosh, that's not too far off, is it? Fast approaching Imok. Imok is the 1st of February, for those of you who have a calendar. And um, anyone who wants to purchase a calendar, I mean, it's just a great way to support what I do on social media. Buy a book, buy a calendar, or a map, or a bumper sticker, and uh, that way then you get you get double for your support. You get what I put out, and no advertising on anything I put out, and uh, then you also get whatever it is you've purchased. So I'll take you outside and show you what I've been up to. Yes, Jack is going to, even though he's completely knackered <laughs> from his walk. <laughs> the door opens, he sees me going out, he wants to join me. So, um, there was a, a great big lull in the storm yesterday and it just seemed incredible because it thought, I thought to myself initially, I thought, well, this is the eye of the storm. Everything was absolutely calm. The sky cleared, the sun came out, and that lasted for about two hours, which was amazing. And I thought, no, it's not the eye of the storm, the storm is over. And then after about two hours, the storm kicked off again. So that was quite weird and wonderful. But anyway, for those two hours or thereabouts, I was out here working. So I'm not sure if I'm showing you what I've shown you before here, because I did try to make a video yesterday and upload it and I couldn't get it uploaded. And I think there was another one the day before and I couldn't get it uploaded. So I've cleared this space. I've cleared four equidistant spaces now along the veranda where um, the man who's going to come and replace the guttering has got space to put his ladder. I've also cut back a very hard cut back of the rose that's growing here again it's in order to enable the new guttering to grow up because I've cleared the underside of this as well I may do a little bit more I've also pruned the fig tree I've taken out all the branches that were not fruiting so you can see there's lots of fruit there um, I've got some more to do obviously still a lot more work to do I've also dug away some more of the um, thick layer of sort of turf that's grown on top of the of the um, of the stones the gravel and uh, Normally it takes a week or so, you know, for the stones to be cleaned off with the rain. But the rain was so severe yesterday, it just cleared the stones in a matter of about half an hour. And um, 
I've also parted up this. Um, this was a, a plant I got in the reduced section. So I've had to clean the plant up quite a lot. It had a lot of dead bits on it and the pot was all split and the roots were all tangled in together. It's a form of cordyline, um, I think, but I'm going to look it up and I'm going to check it out. And uh, I got that pot as well. So I planted that up. I also, see I've been doing washing this morning. I've been doing my hand washing. I have another little viburnum here, which I've potted up. Um, this veranda gets absolutely soaked all the time, so I'm going to have to construct something to go along the top here. I think what I might do is I might put some trellis, build some trellis all the way along here and uh, then plant the the beautiful clematis montana but I think I've spoken about that before so you can see the garden the garden at this end anyway is looking rather lush because of course with all the work and all the cleaning up <clears throat> and I've also been pruning these cordial lines here which have grown amazingly well. So I've been pruning all the dead bits off them and doing some work further over in the garden as well. I mean, I managed to get a lot done in the two hours yesterday in that two hour window, simply because um, I was just eager to get out and start working. I was getting a bit stir crazy being indoors. So, I'm actually looking forward to the spring now because I can see how all this is shaping up and uh, I'm going to be getting some shrubs now and making these two potager beds into shrubberies and I think this big bed along here which has gone rather feral I'm going to turn that into a shrubbery as well because I do like the effect of the New Zealand flax there and it just makes this area then quite low maintenance because of course the work um, my labour is needed further into the woodland now because there's so much wood to be extracted so much, so many trees to be cared for um, it's a delight to go in there and I don't get into my woodland now enough so I really want to clear the decks here and make all this a lot easier to manage and therefore be able to get into the woodland. Now I also um, trimmed up my little my little um, tree there because I'm interested in growing that on with a nice sort of a, a shape to it so I've carried out some tapari. So Bealtona Cottage, the project, the Bealtona project has been about evolution from day one. It's not just a case of planting trees and letting it go. In the in the first few years, those of you who remember are looking at the blogs on the website, the first few years were not actually about trees. I was planting the trees, but they were so small they were hardly noticeable. But in between, I was spending five to seven hours per week mowing and strimming the grass and rushes in order to give the trees a chance to grow. And then in all the vastness of the space, I was growing lots of flowers and lots of vegetables. Hence the honesty stall at the end of the driveway. So, um, I've got to go and get some more bird food. Now that's something I need to do today. So I think I'll head off down to Art Carn and get a, a sack of peanuts and a sack of the wild bird food. Because I think too we're coming into a fairly... Um, cold time and it can be cold and stormy and that's when the birds who are getting ready 
to mate and um, rear their young are can be, well usually are, very hungry. There's my little robin, look, he follows me round the land. So there we go, that's an update. Um, I have another little tree in there, you see in the pot. I'm going to be repotting that. And you can see some of my geraniums at the back. I've also got geraniums over in the polytunnel. So I also want to move this. This is very, very heavy. Uh, I'm going to have a go anyway. <laughs> Only because I'm just belligerent. You know what I'm like. So I'm going to have a go. And please don't make comments like, oh, watch your back. <laughs> I've had back troubles all my life. Okay. All my life. I think a lot of women can have back troubles. I mean, I used to get... Um, I used to suffer very badly, you know, with my monthlies and stuff like that. So my lower back can get very sore. I also suffer with um, sciatica. Now I say suffer, suffer isn't the right word. When I get a bout of sciatica, which comes on my on my left leg usually and hip, um, I take some painkillers and I just get on with what it is I'm going to do. And I'm very cautious about lifting heavy things. I know how to lift. Okay. And also, and this is something that people don't think about enough. You know the old saying, use it or lose it? If you don't keep the muscles in your body well honed, and that includes the muscles in your back and lower back, they're going to weaken and then you will have problems. So, yeah, I'll be trying to move this. I'll be very sensible. And uh, if I find it's, you know, in the realms of impossible for me, then I will get some help. So, um, that's it. Um, I'm going to read some of the book to you when I get a chance. And... Uh, I look forward to that. The book's fabulous, by the way. Just incredible. Uh, anyone who's interested at all in... Um, I suppose it would be... How women have worked so hard to come to the fore. Um, but maybe that's, mm, that's not really putting it right. Um... Anyway, look, what I'll do is maybe this evening or tomorrow I'll read a little bit of the book or some extracts from the book for you. Highly recommended. Okay, so it's a case now of um, going in and resting up because I've just finished my lunch and maybe making myself a pot of tea. So blessings to you all. <laughs>